Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on calculating and interpreting eta and eta squared using SPSS. Eta is a measure of association that we use when we have a nominal variable and a variable measured at the scale level. So taking a look at these fictitious data, I have loaded in the data editor in SPSS. I have a variable named treatment and this is an independent variable with three levels individual, group, and treatment as usual. So this would be individual counseling, group counseling, and the counseling treatment that was provided as part of what the agency would normally do. And you can see moving to the coding behind it, it's coded as 0, 1, and 2. So independent variable with three levels. Then I have a dependent variable here named depression that has scores recorded as continuous. And let's just presume that these values are recorded as t-scores. A t-score is a standard score with a mean of 50 and a standard deviation of 10. So to calculate the eta value, for these two variables, we'll go to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, Cross Tabs. I'm going to move the variable that we're going to treat as the independent variable into the row list box and the variable that we'll treat as the dependent variable into the column list box. Over here to the right, uh, the top right, I'm going to click Statistics. This opens up the Cross Tabs Statistics dialog. And you can see under nominal by interval, uh, there's only one option here, and it's eta. So I'm going to check off eta and click continue. Then I'll click OK. And you can see here we have the case processing summary that comes up first. We have 45 observations, no missing values. And you can see here at the, the treatment times depression cross tabulation that for the treatment we have the rows, individual group and treatment as usual. And then for the columns we have all the values that appeared in the depression variable. And you can see all the counts associated with those values. And then under directional measures, nominal by interval, eta, you can see that it has two values here. One where it treats the treatment variable as the dependent variable and one where it treats the depression variable as the dependent variable. And we know in this case of course the depression variable is our dependent variable so we're going to interpret this value. And this is 0.907. Now eta values range from 0, no association, to 1, which is a perfect association. So value of 0.907 is a strong association uh, between these two variables. To calculate eta squared, we would square the eta value here. And the eta squared statistic will tell us how much variation is explained in the dependent variable by variation in the independent variable. So I'm going to move the output here a little bit to the right, bring up the calculator, and I'm going to move into this table and double click, and then double click on the eta value for depression being treated as a dependent variable to get a precise value of eta. I can see it's 0.907317. So if I square that, I get 0.823224. That's my eta squared value. Now you may recognize that in ANOVA there's a statistic reported named partial eta squared. Now partial eta squared is a different statistic than eta squared. Eta squared is the sum of squares between divided by the sum of squares total. And partial eta squared is the sum of squares between divided by the sum of squares total plus 
the sum of squares error. However, for a one-way ANOVA, the value of eta squared and the value of partial eta squared will be equal. So if I move up here to Analyze and go to General Linear Model Univariate and place treatment as a fixed factor, independent variable, and depression as a dependent variable, then under Options, check off Estimates of Effect Size and click Continue, and then click OK. We can see that we get a partial eta squared value here of 0.823. And again, if I double click on this table and double click on the actual value, you can see it's 0.823224. So I bring that calculator back over, you can see it's the same value. So in this case, because we're working with one way ANOVA, the value of partial eta squared is equal to eta squared. That will not be the case when working with more complex models. Eta squared is a measure of effect size. So when we're interpreting eta squared, one of the popular guidelines is that a value of 0.02 or 2% is small, 0.13 or 13% is medium, and 0.26 or 26% is large. So in this case, because we have an eta squared value of 82%, we would consider this effect size to be large. I hope you found this video on calculating and interpreting eta and eta squared in SPSS to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me. I'll be happy to assist you.